Dutch angle, cute. Hello everybody. That was what we in the trade call a Gary entrance um, in honor of Gary from Physical Format Rock and Roll. I'm just obsessed with the technique of video making, you can see. This is a very special edition of the Righteous Bow Jambo, um, done largely uh, to satisfy a brag that I made in the presence of witnesses, namely my youngest son, Levi, uh, to acknowledge the arrival of my 300th subscriber. 300, big whoop, well it is to me. I'm a weird, off-brand micro channel, and 300 is an enormous and incalculable and inconceivable number of people to have. And the beauty of the having 300 subscribers is you get to feel that you know most of them, and that you, you have over 1,364 days and 150 videos developed some form of intimacy and relationship with them. And to whoever that unknown 300 subscriber is, I salute you. There have been a few people who've been with me since the very, very beginning back in 2019, November 15th, 2019. One of the other things that I said about this video was that I would do it unscripted and not edit it. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm a lying bastard. There's a script there and you know I'm going to go back and edit this. So there have been people who've been with me since actually before the beginning. Um, Sal and Charlie were following me on my MySpace blogs and WordPress way back when, it was 20 years ago. Um, funny thing about Sal is that we corresponded for years and years across these blogs, years and years. And it was only until very, very recently I realised that she just lives three miles down the road from me. She doesn't anymore. She's moved away. She married Ian, the world's most manly man. I mean, seriously, that's a freaking Viking. Anyway, she's uh, moved away with her career, but she's still watching. Hey, Sal. Um, so Sal, Charlie, Carrot Man's been around a while. Viva Trump. A um, few people since the very beginning, and I salute you as friends. Um, I have enjoyed immensely the, um, the process of the interaction through comments. I think my two favourite comments both came on the same video. Uh, it was the Taylor Swift versus the Gaylaws video at the end of last year. Uh, one, was from, one was from Gender Fluid Batman, who, in defending me against a charge of homophobia, said, Dude, the guy loves Kylie, Dusty Springfield, Johnny Mathis and Patsy Cline. He's more gay than I am, which made me laugh uproariously. And the other one was from uh, Maggie, I think, who, in response to a comment that my daughter Ivy left on the blog, said, my God, you are your father's daughter. I thought that was beautiful. So it's moments like that that, that I really enjoy. My very favourite videos have been the ones that I've made with Ivy, particularly the ABBA video. I thought that was hilarious, and I was so impressed with the way that Ivy's argument managed to change my mind in the mid-course of the video, because my policy... And I think you'll notice it here in my interactions with other video makers is that the best people in the world to know are smart people who disagree with you. So I hope I've been sufficiently disagreeable for you. I did promise at my first ever video to be ever dapper, ever curmudgeonly and frequently irritating. I'm probably not as dapper as I used to be. I mean, this pocket square with this shirt. But I have worked very hard on my curmudgeonliness and my irritatingness. So there is actually a purpose to this video, and that is lately there's been a rash of videos around where people said, these are 10 artists you'd never find in my collection. Well, most of the artists I don't like, I actually do have in my collection. It's not much of a collection. I've got so many old records lying around here, I'm thinking of renaming the channel Joe Biden's Garage. As to that, a lot of people do ask me, why is the channel called The Righteous Bow Jambo? Originally, it was going to be called a banjo and an onion. That was the, the first time I had for it. And then I locked down, it's too late to stop now. That was going to be the title of the, of the video. But right at the very last moment, at the very last moment, I changed it to The Righteous Bow Jambo, and the first episode became, it's too late to stop now. The Righteous Bow Jambo comes from, I don't watch a lot of television, but I did watch assiduously and repeatedly The Wire. So The Righteous by Jambo comes from The Wire. And if you check the writing down through the years, you'll find that there are a number of little references to The Wire that I put in here. 
That's my dog. This is the fat, oh, come on, calm down, sweetie. This is the fowl hound. She's uh, 17 years old and she has increasingly vivid and loud doggy dreams. And when she wakes up from them, she thinks she's a puppy again, don't you? But um, her name is Dog. The cat's name is Kitty. The dog's name is Dog. The bird's name is Bird. We like to keep things simple here. But she's going to be fine now. Say hi to the nice people, pup. There you go. Yes. So there is a purpose to um, this video. And as I said, there have been a number of, of, of people going around with, um, yes, artists you'll never find in my collection. Well, the problem is most of the artists you'll never find in my collection that I don't like are in my collection. And I don't like them because I've gone, I paid $25 for this shit. I hate this. So I can't do one on that. Um, and then there'd be, you know, 10 songs I hate. Well, hate's a strong word. So I originally thought I'd, I'd do an original spin on it. It was going to be 12 musical artists I'd like to punch in the face. But as soon as I wrote Don Henley, I thought, mission accomplished. You smacked Don Henley in the chops. You've pretty much covered it all, haven't you? So this is going to be a dozen, because we do things by dozens here at the Righteous Boat Jam, but not by tens. You get that sort of 20% more yeah 12 artists that i should be into that my musical dna says i should love but for some reason i just can't so we're going to start with my um, almost notorious disdain for heavy metal i i don't understand heavy metal i don't understand what its function is i don't understand what purpose it serves and it's, it's not for one of trying back in the mid 80s i used to go to the heavy metal nights at the sherwood Australian Rules Football Club every Saturday night and hang out with metalheads and try to figure out what they were on about. But the thing I found about the metalheads is lovely people like goths, lovely, lovely people to hang out with. But I just couldn't see the point in the music. Maybe maybe heavy metal is like bluegrass. Um, you notice there are no like average bluegrass players. If you're going to be a bluegrass player, you've got to be the most fantastic banjo player, imagine, or an incredible mandolinist. Well, your flat picking skills have got to be A1A. A. Well, apparently, you know, maybe you've got to be technically such a level of hot shit in heavy metal that, that um, it's a sort of a snobbery, I guess, or something. But I cannot get into it. Um, the other one that I'm, I'm famously intolerant of is Prog. At the local vinyl record market last weekend, I bought some uh, Prog albums to think I you really need to broaden my perspective. And I got one by a band called Henry Cow. Now, there is some Henry Cow that I've heard that I like, a song called Bitten Storm Over Oom, I'm quite a fan of. But I got this record and I thought, Jesus, Henry, um, there are war crimes that were more atrocious than some of these sax solos. This is just dreadful. Um, so I've never really understood prog. I mean, I understand jazz. I can see what the point of jazz is. And jazz is like a home music for me. But prog is just like, Bad jazz. So, coming to some individuals we choose to insult. Um, never really gotten Santana. Uh, I know that he's a you know very famous, and most most of the people coming to the list will be guitar players, by the way. Now I know that he's a famous and a wonderfully reputable guitarist, Carlos Santana, and it's not like you want to plough the car into a tree or something when they come on the radio. But and they were great at Woodstock, but. Gee, it's all a bit whittly, fiddly, and doesn't really go anywhere for me. So Santana is elevated music for me at best. Um, I am notoriously ungenerous to Bruce Springsteen. Um, I, and once again, everyone goes, why don't you like Bruce Springsteen? You should love Bruce Springsteen. Um, he's got all of the virtues that you extol in a, in a, in a songwriter, in, in Bruce Springsteen, in a performer. But he doesn't. Um, his songs are dumb, clunky, and meat-headed. He is, as an individual, pretty obnoxious. But then whiny lefties always get my gut. Um, and his band is just clunky, meat-headed lumpiness, and he seems to think he's James Brown. I'm sorry. Bruce Springsteen is, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, a ham-fisted idiot. Speaking of odious individuals who are also overrated guitar players, there is Eric Clapton. Um, he's fine when he's doing uh, lay down Sally. That's that's fine when he's doing that. Not when he's pretending to be any kind of important guitar player because he's not. He is the most accomplished magpie and magnet for other people's styles and ideas there is. 
Um, he is also, even by my low standards, really racist. Um, I saw Eric Clapton once in early 1985, and he came on, I was three rows back, he came on, he was so drunk, he could smell the whiskey on his breath from three rows back over the bong smoke. Um, and four songs in, we were yelling to have Rene Gaya, the opening act, come back on for him. He picked himself up right, he played Lay Down Sally and got through the night, but uh, one of the worst gigs I've ever seen was Eric Clapton. Here's another one that will upset people, and it will upset people I like, but I don't see the point of Rush. Um, and I love Rush fans because they're the most passionate and devoted and intimately knowledgeable fans. They know the most tiny things, and I love that. But the music just leaves me so cold. And, I mean, he writes about Ayn Rand. That should be interesting. But it's not. Um, and then I get this 2112 sort of thing. It's all this willy tiddly Harry Potter shit, and I, I don't understand that at all. So Rush just generally leave me a bit cold. I'm supposed to, in any fair world, like George Harrison. But here's the thing. George Harrison, really, he's just a tiny bit shit. Um, he's written, you know, four good songs in his life, and they're very good songs, and he was a very lovely person, and he was just the worst Beatle. Um, I can't get into George Harrison at any level at all. I look at All Things Must Pass, and everyone says, oh, it's a wonderful album. Um, I give it a bit of stick in TRB 92 when it comes up, but it's really, it's the, it's the solo Beatle, or Beatle if you like, Beatle by extension, equivalent of Exile on Main Street. There's some great stuff on it, but there's just too much obscure and obfuscating and irrelevant material there. So I can't really hold that in as high esteem as I should. And the rest of this stuff is oh, sour, dour, and you get sick of alternating major and minor chords. It's his one trick, and he's played it to death. Oh dear. Another band that hipsters love, that I should love because I'm a hipster, is Wilco. And apart from the very, very early records when they were still basically uh, Uncle Tupelo, um, I just can't get with Wilco. I've seen them live, they're terrific. I've seen Jeff Twiggy live solo, he's terrific. But gee, I can't go much more than half an album of, of Wilco. I don't understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to do everything and I really don't think that they're accomplishing it. But that's just me, a lot of people do like Wilco. A lot of people like George Harrison as well, but I'm used to that. My sister, whose opinion I value very highly and who curates music extremely well, told me for about a year constantly, you've got to listen to Amy Winehouse. You've got to get into Amy Winehouse. She's so great. I said, well, I've got a Dusty Springfield greatest hits. I don't really need Amy Winehouse, but I gave in and I bought an album and I listened to it. And I've listened to it twice since, but I've never bothered flipping it over to side B to listen to the rest of it after listening to the first half. I don't get the point at all of Amy Winehouse, and I don't understand the mad cult around her. Frankly, Adele skins her, but people like Amy Winehouse. Dusty Springfield crushes her. Dusty Springfield crushes everyone. Okay, okay three big hate bringers at the end. And it makes me sad to say this because all three of them passed away under sad circumstances. But I've never seen the magic of Peter Green. Um, I understand he was tremendously influential as a player and he was certainly an improvement on Eric Clapton. But I just, it's probably just not enough of him developing there with Fleetwood Mac. And the Fleetwood Mac records aren't well enough made to showcase him to really get me to understand the cult of Peter Green. Never really got it. The other one is Roy Buchanan. Now, guitar players are supposed to worship Roy Buchanan. He's supposed to be the greatest American guitar player ever. But I just find he's technically brilliant. He's he's got great taste in what he does. I mean, technically, he's better than Jimi Hendrix. A lot of guitar players are better than Jimi Hendrix, but he doesn't have 
that thing. He doesn't have the feel. He doesn't have the touch. He doesn't have the, the wit or the sense of mischief and disruption in his playing that Hendrix and guys like that have. And finally, the last one, the guy who my every shred of my musical DNA says I should be considering God and I should be doing videos on, I should be erecting statues to, is Danny Gatton. Now, everything about Danny Gatton says I should love him. He is the master of the Telecaster and I'm a lifelong and inveterate Telecaster player. This is old Buck, 2000 American Standard. <laughs> I hear him, and there's stuff he does with Robert Gordon which is dazzling, I can't figure out how he does it, but it just leaves me cold. Poor old Danny Gatton. Um, I mean, of all the tragic and horrid deaths that we talk about in The Righteous by Jambo, Danny Gatton was probably the saddest and most unnecessary. But I just can't get into his music and I feel sad for that. Anyway, to the 300, I salute you. Stay tuned, there's plenty more wacky stuff coming. Um, I'm going to change things up a bit. The, the pastors of foreign countries are going to get a little more expansive. There's some new features being added as we go along. You may have noticed some new theme music and little accoutrements, but there's more to come. It's going to evolve into something a little more magazine style. Uh, TRB92, which I've been working on since October last year. I'm down to the stage now of adding the final music so hopefully that will be out in a day or two this video will buy me a little bit of time and whether that style of video becomes a series and a brand separate from the righteous by jambo i'm not sure yet but you'll let me know the 300 of you and those who come after you i love you madly and until the next time we're all together in good company good lord be well and the creek's don't rise you stay righteous <laughs>